there's no time to wait. Exciting developments are on the horizon. Starship hardware is in the final stages of preparation, ready to overcome the last obstacles on its path to Flight 5. Recently, Elon Musk and Gwynne Shotwell responded to ULA CEO Tory Bruno's critical remarks about the Raptor 3 release, drawing attention across the industry. Additionally, Rocket Lab has tested a new engine for its forthcoming reusable rocket, signaling its readiness to compete in the rapidly evolving space race. With a wealth of intriguing updates to explore today, let's get started. The countdown to the fifth integrated flight of Starship is in its final weeks with anticipation building for the missions ahead. SpaceX has been diligently preparing for this significant event. Recently, the company shared a tweet on X featuring images of the two critical components for the flight, S-30 and B-12. The accompanying message was clear. Flight 5 Starship and Super Heavy are ready to fly, pending regulatory approval. Following the static fire on July 26th, S-30 was brought back to the production site for thorough checks on its engine system and heat shield. After a brief stint at the Rocket Garden for additional checks, it was moved to Mega Bay 2. One notable update to S-30 was the installation of a new Raptor vacuum engine. After the engine replacement, S-30 was transferred to Massey. Initially, it seemed another static fire test was on the horizon, but SpaceX opted for a spin prime test instead, indicating confidence in the new engine's reliability. With these steps completed, S-30 is finally prepared for the upcoming flight. Regarding B-12, following the static fire test on July 15th, it was returned to Mega Bay. Recently, the hot staging ring for B-12 has emerged, indicating that it is ready to be assembled onto the booster. With these preparations in place, both S-30 and B-11 are poised for the next phase. They are expected to proceed to the launch pad for wet dress rehearsal, likely within the next two weeks. The subsequent steps will be expedited in preparation for a potential launch in early September. However, everything is contingent on FAA approval. While the FAA is not investigating the recent mishap, they may be evaluating a proposal for catching the booster with the Mechazilla arm, which could extend the timeline. We anticipate an update on this license approval soon. In the tweet mentioned, SpaceX also noted additional booster catch testing and Flight 6 vehicle testing is planned while waiting for clearance to fly. Even before Flight 5 has launched, SpaceX is already preparing for Flight 6. Prototypes S31 and B13 are in development, and the booster catch test is being prepared with the rollout of B14.1 to the launch pad. This indicates high expectations for future Starship missions and their catch capabilities. Regarding the schedule, based on SpaceX's determination, it is likely that Flight 6 will follow shortly after the completion of Flight 5. In the best case scenario, it could occur by the end of this year or at the very latest, early next year. Starship flights are set to continue at a rapid pace. Please show your support for SpaceX by commenting, let's go, and don't forget to like, share the video, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's progress. In addition to Flight 5 preparations, you might have noticed the recent announcement of new Starship engine version Raptor 3. Congratulations have been extended to the SpaceX team for this significant achievement. However, ULA CEO Tori Bruno's response to this development was somewhat critical. Initially, Tori praised SpaceX's efforts, stating, They have done an excellent job making the assembly simpler and more producible. However, he then made a controversial remark, So, there is no need to exaggerate this by showing a partially assembled engine without controllers, fluid management, or TVC systems, then comparing it to fully assembled engines that do. This comment suggests that Tori Bruno may be underestimating the Raptor 3 engine. While the design of Raptor 3 focuses on simplicity, efficiency, and reliability, Tori's remarks imply he views these features as shortcomings, not recognizing the integrated approach that SpaceX is taking with this new engine. In response to Tori Bruno's comments, SpaceX's top leaders had notable reactions. Musk swiftly posted a test image of the Raptor 3 with the caption, Raptor 3 first firing today. He followed up with a tweet showcasing ULA CEO Bruno's comment, accompanied by a brief message, lol. Musk provided further clarification in another tweet, all the small plumbing and wiring had to be deleted or incorporated into the primary structure because Raptor 3 will have no heat shield. 
Also, all parts have to be actively cooled in some way, so we added regenerative cooling where there was no existing fluid or gas flow. Gwen Shotwell, SpaceX's president, took a more direct approach. She shared a Raptor 3 test image with a tweet, Works pretty good for a partially assembled engine, smiley face. Her tweet highlighted the phrase, partially assembled, referencing Tori Bruno's previous comment. The images from both leaders are impressive. They depict the upper part of the engine with frost, indicating the presence of liquid oxygen and methane, and the flame below showing signs of a mock diamond, a testament to Raptor 3's exceptional performance. These updates reinforce the Raptor 3's position as a leading engine in the future of rocketry. And those reactions have further highlighted ULA's challenges. Despite its reputation as a key player with rockets like Atlas, Delta, and the upcoming Vulcan Centaur, ULA has never developed its own engine. The Atlas V rocket, for instance, uses the Russian RD-180 engine, while the new Vulcan Centaur relies on Blue Origin's BE-4 engine. ULA's reliance on external engines has proven problematic, particularly with the BE-4, which has significantly delayed the Vulcan Centaur and caused upheaval in ULA's plans and operations. In contrast, SpaceX's Raptor 3, set to be installed on Starships, is poised to showcase impressive capabilities countering any disparaging remarks from competitors. If you agree with this assessment, comment FIRE down below, or you know, just put in the fire emoji. Now, shifting focus, let's explore an update from Rocket Lab regarding their new engine, Archimedes, which will power their upcoming reusable rocket, Neutron. On August 8th, Rocket Lab announced the successful completion of the first static fire test of their Archimedes engine at NASA's Stennis Space Center in Mississippi. The test pushed the methane-slash-liquid oxygen engine to 102% of its rated power, with the exact burn duration undisclosed. Archimedes is designed to produce 165,000 pounds, or about 74 tons of thrust. Rocket Lab founder and CEO Peter Beck described the test as a major milestone. Emphasizing the rapid progress, Hot firing Archimedes is a major development milestone for Neutron, and our team has achieved it on an accelerated timeline, taking a new staged combustion liquid rocket engine from clean sheet design to hot fire in just a couple of years is industry-leading stuff. Beck highlighted that the tested engine was a flight-ready version, distinguishing Rocket Lab's approach from other companies that often use downscaled prototypes before developing a flight-capable version. He added, from here, it is about dialing the engine in, building a bunch more of them, and getting them rolling off the production line. This indicates that Rocket Lab is preparing to move quickly into full-scale production and further testing. Archimedes will power the Neutron rocket designed to offer cost-effective, reliable, and responsive launch services for commercial and government missions. This aligns with Rocket Lab's broader strategy to establish a strong presence in the space industry. Rocket Lab's emphasis on reusability and efficient development sets it apart from competitors like Blue Origin and ULA who face challenges with rocket reusability and delays. While Rocket Lab may not yet surpass SpaceX in capability or scale, their progress and innovative approach position them as a promising player in the space race. The coming months will be crucial as Rocket Lab continues to develop its systems and aim for significant impacts in space exploration. And I, for one, cannot wait to see what they strive for next. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.